Since the circumnavigation of the globe by Francis Drake and Ferdinand Magellan about 500 years ago, we know for sure that the shape of our planet is spherical and not flat. Nowadays, we have lost the sphere of falling down at the end of the horizon. But instead, we are facing new threats and future challenges unambitiously connected to the fact that the radius of our planet is constant, as well as its surface area. As a matter of fact, the space on Earth is limited, just as coal, oil and natural gas, the fossil resources we are currently wasting to meet our daily energy needs. Another serious problem which arises from using fossil resources is the emission of CO2. CO2 strongly contributes to the global warming, which is mainly responsible for the increased occurrence of natural catastrophes such as heavy storms, flooding and extreme aridity. Therefore, we need to find smart solutions for our future energy supply independent from fossil resources with the ultimate goal to reduce or stop the CO2 emission. But the use of alternative resources like wind and sun is limited due to storage problems so far. How can we build a sustainable energy system fulfilling all important criteria such as environmental friendliness, safety and permanent availability? So let's have a closer look at nature and be bio-inspired. The primary energy source for all life on Earth is the sun. Plants use the sun energy for growing through a process known as photosynthesis, thereby they absorb CO2. The easiest way to recover this energy is burning wood. CO2 resulting from the combustion of wood or any other kind of process involving biological material does not contribute to the global warming since it is part of the carbon cycle. Instead of heat, biological material or biomass can be converted into various other forms of usable energy, for example in the methane gas by microbial decomposition. Methane gas can be easily stored and used to run engines or turbines producing electricity whenever it is needed. The most efficient source for biomass are algae, which grow 5 to 10 times faster than rooted plants. And more importantly, they do not take up space on land needed for the food production. However, since algae grow only close to the water surface where sunlight is accessible, most of the free space in the sea is lost for the cultivation. To open up deeper sea areas, we need to develop an artificial light system. Since the photosynthesis works most efficiently in the blue and red spectrum of the visible light, most of the sun energy is lost for the biomass production. Therefore, Novel semiconductor nanocrystal LEDs, shortly nano LEDs, with bright and precisely tunable colors might be the ideal light source for growing algae in the deep sea. So what are semiconductor nanocrystals and how do they work? A nanocrystal is an inorganic structure measuring only a few nanometers in size. One nanometer is a millionth of a millimeter. To get an idea of how small a nanocrystal really is, you might compare the size of a nanocrystal to the size of a balloon. The same size relation exists between a balloon and our Earth, which is about 2,500 trillion times bigger than a nanocrystal. Because of its extremely small size, a nanocrystal can exhibit exceptional properties which can no longer be explained by classical physics. Imagine a balloon changing its color when it becomes smaller. This is exactly what happens with a nanocrystal when it shrinks down to the size of a few atoms. This phenomenon which is also known as the quantum size effect, can be explained by using a simple physical model, the so-called band energy model. The band energy model, consisting of a valence and conduction band separated by the band gap, which is a material-specific constant, describes the electronic and optical properties of a semiconductor nanocrystal. At room temperature, only the valence band is filled with electrons. The system is in the so-called ground state. By absorbing energy, such as light, or by applying a certain voltage, electrons can be promoted from the valence band to the energetically higher conduction band. This is accompanied by the formation of positive holes in the valence band. The system is now in the excited state. When electrons and holes recombine and the system relaxes back to the ground state, excess energy can be released as light. The color of the light corresponds to the band gap energy. The conversion of electric energy into light which is known as electroluminescence, is the working principle of LED. In contrast to normal LEDs, where the emission color depends on the material or material mixture, the color of nanocrystal LEDs can be precisely tuned by the size of the nanocrystal. 
To understand this quantum size effect, we have to go back to the excited state. The excited state is defined by excitons, which can be mathematically described by a so-called wave function. The wave function contains the information about the exciton diameter, the specific distance between electron and hole, which is correlated to the band gap energy. But when the nanocrystal becomes smaller than the exciton diameter, then the distance between electron and hole has to diminish, as well as the wavelength of the corresponding wave function, which is confined within the material. Since a shorter wavelength means higher energy, the emitted light must be blue shifted. Increasing the nanocrystal size leads to redshift and thus to a lower band gap energy. Since nano LEDs are just in the beginning of their development, there's still enough room for the optimization. My goal is to improve the nanocrystal quality, making nano LEDs superior to already existing technologies. With nano LEDs, it might become even possible to make photosynthesis more efficient than under direct sunlight. Imagine, traditional offshore oil rigs could be replaced by CO2 neutral biomass power stations producing green energy from algae with the power of nanocrystals. Such a bio-inspired system would fulfill all important criteria required for a permanent, safe and sustainable energy supply in our future.